and all these things, and you're looking for that to begin to add work in your life. So what is the world got for me today? And this is the stuff I would say. I'll just go through the things I would sort of say rather than just the exercise, and we'll get to you know, how to cultivate that desire. So I'm going to be world to me today. You know, it's pretty simple, but if you don't act, your desire towards something, Father, my desire to come into agreement and resonate with you, to be in death. So talk to him and share your heart's desire with him. My food is to do your work. I choose to take that manner into my heart as my source of supply for today. So I'm sort of activating this in relationship with him. Father, open my heart to you. Please open my heart. That's good. You know, this is something which is a relationship thing. It's not just a technique or a formula, it's a relationship. So I want to be in relationship with him and be talking to him. And be open to him to do what he wants to do. Father, unveil the revelation of my destiny, that the desires of my heart will draw me towards it. So I'll see your purposes around me today. Because you may go through your whole day and not recognize any of the things that God's doing around you because you're not focused in the right place. I want to look at the fingerprints of God on my life around me so I can see what God's doing and cooperate. Because there's so much that God's doing we miss because we're focused in the wrong thing. So if my desires are towards Him and I can see Him around me, Father, I surrender my day to align my will with your will. And then sometimes I break some specifics because I know I have appointments every day with people around the world, so I really want to know what's your own will for that situation. What am I authorized to do? Because in the early days when I was doing hangouts and counters, you know, I did a few unauthorized things. Because you know, people ask me, can you take me to the fire stone? Or can you take me to the judgment seat? And it's, oh yeah, okay. And it's like a reptile. You know, one, one lady said it took three months to recover from being on fire. Because <laughs> actually, I really wasn't authorized to tell you that. You know, because I didn't ask. I assumed, because she asked, but okay, it was okay. Now, I've learned now to take each hand out before God, ask him, is there anything I'm authorized to do, or is there anything I'm authorized not to do? So to make sure that I'm in alignment with what the people in that group need, and I don't sort of engage them in a character which they're not quite ready for. You know, that hangout, I put a, I put a disclaimer on it. You know, <laughs> don't do the exercise if you're not ready. <laughs> so I asked him specifically, is there any revelation I need to know for this group, for this situation, this meeting I'm doing, this person I'm meeting? You know, and I focus on being in him, in his name, so that I can then see from that perspective. So I want to see my life from the perspective of the line you're seeing like that. So I can then start to see from being in here. So Father, I choose to step into you to look out of my day and my circumstances from your heavenly perspective. So I'm always going back to him. I'm not just sort of doing things by rote. I want him to have every opportunity to guide, direct, speak to me, direct to me. Sometimes I'll say, yes, son, be careful. I was like, okay, what am I supposed to be careful about? Well, just be careful, because yeah, he talks to me like that. Because when I surrender and say, hey, I want to see things from your perspective, he'll give me warnings and direction, because I'm seeing things from that order rather than just the way I see it in my own life. So, you know, I look out from the lion's eyes, or the eagle, or the man, and I see things to administrate from that perspective. So I speak. In the order into my life. You can only administrate that which is in your heart and you're given responsibility for. You know, I can't administer over something that God never authorized me to. So you really need to know what are my spheres of government. Now they're pretty wide for me because I've been given, being faithful in little, and God has released more and more government. Now sometimes you've got to be careful. I went to Germany last year. And I helped them. God showed me some things, and I helped them slay some giants and dragons over their nation. And, you know, I, I saw a call for the Venture Three over their nation and their regions, and I saw all this regional perspective of how their regions are going to get people coming together. I'm like, wow, this is really good. So I released it to them, 
And uh, then I was on the plane on my home. He says, You do know that you are responsible for that which you removed. So I'm not worried about it. So I've now removed this whole spiritual dynamic, and now I'm responsible. So I'm like, God, send a mention three quick. <laughs> call people, call people, make responsibility. So I'm like, oh, so I'll have to be a bit more careful. So that's what I do. Well, I'm recognizing that there are things I can do, there are things I can help other people to do, and then they can do them. And I always want to be careful that it doesn't come down to me. Because I don't want people looking to me. That's why I don't prophetically release things into people's lives very often, because they're looking to me. I want to help them to go, what's God saying? Let God speak to you. Okay, I've had this dream. You know, I can interpret dreams. You know, I, I love symbolism and God opens that veil, <coughs> but I used to do it, and now God said, and reminded me really, look, make sure that people aren't, you're not becoming their dream girl. Because it's what people do. So I say, well, no, I'm not going to interpret that for you, but let's go and see what God says. You know, let's open that rub. What does that mean to you? Help them to take it back to God. So, you know, I sort of, in the order of my life, that order is what helps me help other people, but not help other people to be dependent on me. Because that's the last thing I want, because that's an old order. I do not want to be setting up a dependent culture. Everything must be about hearing God. So when we minister to people and help people become free in God, we want them to hear God for themselves so that they can then work that out in their lives. Yeah. Rather than, oh, I need to go back to the council again, or I need to go back for another session of history again. We want people to learn how to hear God for themselves so they can ask God to help them, which is what we live in sacrifice processes. God, show me. Is there anything that you want to deal with today? You know, highlight that. Use a situation in my life to make me understand. Yeah, we can be proactive. We can decree the vision. So then when I look back into what was. So when I do that, I go into that place and then I can see and hear and feel from that perspective and then I can carry that in my heart. So I carry his heart in my heart because I've seen his heart and now my heart has changed. My heart will now draw me towards his heart. So I can begin to outwork those things. So I sort of say, Father, reveal your desires for me. Reveal what's written on my scroll of destiny. Father, I look into what was. So I can manifest that into what is so that I can transform what will be. So I ask him and I speak to him in this process. So what does my life or my mountain or my seven mountains or the church, what does it look like from your perspective? How do I see people from your perspective? How do I feel your heart for those people? How do I carry them in my heart so that I can release the government of God so that they can then fulfill their destiny. You can't carry so many, many people in your heart. You know, I carry certain people in my heart, those who are closest to me. I carry my wife, my children, my bench in my heart, some people in the church in my heart, and that. But then, you know, I carry the world in my heart, but that's the heart of God to the world, not actually all the people. Can you imagine? Be like Bruce Almighty, you've seen that brief film Bruce Almighty. <laughs> it's like, hey, you don't mind doing all the things by hand with this power, and all of a sudden it's like, what are all these people talking in my head, asking me to do all these things? You know, and we, that's not what God wants. Obviously, what He wants is for us to carry His heart for the world, which will be to release the world into the freedom that brings His government. You know? So, ask me, you know. Then cultivate the desires of my heart. Cultivate the desires of my heart is so important. You have to begin to brood over things. You know, when a, a, a bird lays eggs in a nest, it doesn't just go away and leave them, because they get cold, and then they won't hatch. You'll just get a runny yolk. But if they sit on it, and they put heat into it, and they brood over it, then they sit there just waiting, waiting, waiting for the Thing they're waiting to come into life, it grows within the egg. So the egg actually produces another chick for the bird, and then it eventually hatches out the pecks up through the shell and breaks open and it's there, and then it gets fed. So brooding and incubating the desires of your heart are so important. So when God says something, or God reveals something, maybe it's something he's calling you to do, 
or maybe it's a blueprint or a vision, don't just say, oh, I got my blueprint, that great. I'll be able to do it. You won't. Because in the brooding process, and then the incubation process, it begins to grow and develop and become have life. Because an egg initially has the potential for life, but if you don't incubate it, it will never grow. So you receive that revelation for your own life. You receive some of the things God's called you to, and you brood and you incubate that desire. Now, how I do this practically is I focus and I think about it and I meditate about it, and I practically begin to seek God about it. And as an example, how do I do this in my normal life? Because I brood over things in my normal life to create desire. Now I'm I'm sort of a bit of a techie geek nerd who likes tech stuff. So I have very I sort of in Flipbook and various sort of things where I see what's the latest technology coming out. You know, what's the latest things that might be useful for me? Because I'm I very useful. You know, some of the stuff I do has come out of the desire for being able to do the things I do, and I look in the tech stuff so I can see the opportunities. So I find something I'm interested in, but look, Ooh, that looks really interesting. That might be useful. So I will then go and find a review of that. Who's reviewed this to see if it's any good? You know, and usually it's like a one, two star, star review. It's like, mm, probably not going to be that good. So yeah, four or five star reviews, that might be really interesting. So I read the review, I find out about it. I'm starting to cultivate an interest. Is this going to be useful? Then, if I find yes, this might be really useful, I'll go to the next stage. I'll go download the manual because I want to find out everything this does, how this works, you know, what are the issues. Then, if the manual looks really good, I think, wow, yeah, this, this will be great. I then go and find a forum that people who bought this stuff are starting talking about it because they start finding all the problems and all the issues about it. And so I listen, read the forums. You know, at this point, I don't post on the forums, I'm just reading other people's reviews and I'm looking, wow, okay, so now I know all the potential pitfalls that someone else has found, so that when I get this piece of equipment, if I am, I'm not going to have all those pitfalls, I'll overcome all the obstacles. So, and when you do this in your own life, and you're beginning to do it around the things of God, suddenly you see so many things that you never saw before, because you've taken the time to put the interest in it. God to unveil, to warn you, to direct you, to encourage you. So I'll get to the point where now I'm, I'm in the forums. The desire for this is growing. And until I get to the point where my desire for this overcomes the cost to get it, then I won't buy it. Because there's a cost to everything. Am I willing to pay the cost? for this desire to be at work. And my wife knows when I'm incubating something in desire. Because <laughs> she'll, she'll see me gazing at my screen. My interest is off other things and I'm looking at this. So it's like my latest cultivated desire, which was last year, was um, for a curved 4K ultra high definition wide screen <laughs> 60-inch TV. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I said, uh, and she said, we've got a widescreen TV. He doesn't need anything else. But I'm sort of looking at this, you know, and I'm cultivating this line and think, wow, this is four times more pixels than I'm going to think, think of how clear the picture's going to be. And it's like, oh, wow, this is a smart TV and it's got this in it and something. And then one day we're going up to this shop. Um, I like going to techie shops, of course. But I was going with my wife because she wanted to buy a purple toaster. She likes purple things. And she wanted a purple toaster. It's like, so, so where's the toasters? Oh, the toasters are over there. It's like, but over there, this is to me. So I'm then. I find myself being gravitating <laughs> toward the wall over that side. And it's like I'm standing, gazing longingly at the very TV that I want. Looking at it, thinking, wow, 
Look at the sharpness of that picture. Wow, look at the 3D image. Look at this, it's like woo. And then they put on the screen. This is what the old, ordinary, I can't hide it. Like. <laughs> this is the 4K. It's like, wow, I've been looking at that old thing this time. Look at what I'm looking at now. I'm like, wow, and then she comes over. What are you doing? <laughs> Just looking, <laughs> but, but look, it's just I don't see any difference. <laughs> I said, Look, it's four times the more pixel. We, we just moved house, and we're our sort of set left side, was a bit further away from the wall than our previous place. So, look, you know, we're not getting the benefit from what we've already got because we're further away. This only will get really sharp. Picture. So it's like, so she's just like, over the top of her head. It's like, so I'm like, I'm really cultivating the desire. Now I've gone before, this will be nice, to, I would really like this, to, I really want this, to, I must have this. <laughs> My precious, <laughs> my precious. And then it's like, what is it going to cost? Because I don't bother looking at how much it costs until I've got the desire, because I'll be willing to pay whatever it costs. Right? So I know it's like, what does it cost? Okay. How many birthdays and Christmases might that be? <laughs> how much does it cost? So say in that little contingency I keep just in case I might need something. Because uh, I, uh, I don't buy much clothes. It's not interesting because I've got something to wear. And we might. It's like, <laughs> so it's like, I don't need anything really. So I say people give me Christmas and birthdays. It's like, we think of anything to spend them on, so I just put them in the steel so. <laughs> At this point now, <laughs> what does it cost? How much have I got? Okay, let's go. So I'll then go and search the wall. Oh, it's so Maybe that gives you what the best deals are. Oh, wow. So it's like, so now I've got something which is a monitor. Which will <laughs> help. Now, I don't know, I don't know this is sort of a bit jokey, but actually, this is what we do because of desire. So then when I found one weekend, this thing dropped in price by 600 pounds, about almost a thousand dollars. One weekend. Wow. And it's like, I need to get it now. <laughs> <laughs> and I had that very release in my spirit that I was able to do this. And so I, I spoke to my wife and said, look, this is a one opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> but I really need to take advantage of that because it will cost us so much more later. <laughs> and Christmas is coming. So this is December. It's like, wouldn't it be nice with all the family around for Christmas that we can have this and we can watch the children's cartoons on this? <laughs> So it's like, this will be really good to have. And so she goes, oh, here we go. Because I've sort of drip fed, drip fed, drip fed to a point where she's like, oh, you're going to do this anyway, aren't you? <laughs> well, not with that good permission. <laughs> so we get to this stage where then we can over it, then it comes, and it's like, now I'm using it. And then I'm like, Wow, I'm still looking at all the forums because they still bring new things out and you learn more things than all the settings for the TV, best settings. Because people post best settings. It's a nice way of getting the best out of it. Now, when you do this with the things of God, you have to do it to that level. Because if you do not get it to the point where you're willing to pay the cost, which means the time, the effort, the energy, whatever the thing is, whether it's finances or whatever, to do this, you won't have to do it. You have to cultivate God's desire so that you're willing to pay the cost, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Because that's what will be important. Because some of the things cost us in God. 
Now, actually, doing this in God is going to require transformation in how I think right now, how I behave right now. Yeah, I'm going to go through this by No matter what the cost is, I wonder what God's best is for me. I'll sacrifice to it. I'll be a living sacrifice to see God's desire fulfilled in my life. And so cultivate it, groove on it. It doesn't just happen. You know, when you get it in your heart, the desires of your heart will totally change. And you'll be able to add more of these things. So I then bring Father, I bring my mountain to you, or I bring my church or my ecclesia or my blueprint so I can carry it in my heart. I want to see from your perspective. Show me things about this. I want to talk to you about it. But give me insight into this. So I'm focusing, focusing, focusing on that little thing that he gave me as a seed or a little egg. But if I grew on it and incubate it, it will produce life. And God's life in it. So they can have work. You, know, you have to carry things in your heart to have authority. You know, that's what God does. So I'm cultivating the desire of my heart. I do this. You know, I think, I focus, I meditate. What would it be like to have this? What would it be like in what was to see my destiny at work and what will be? So I daydream. Daydream is a really good thing to do in a kingdom. Just allow yourself to meditate around, show me what this would be like. What would it be like to be operating in this? What would it be like to administrate in this? What would a city of refuge be like? What is an ecclesia like built on the foundations of heavenly government? What would it look like? And I do that a lot. I just allow him and me to go around and think and meditate and take picture and to see what it will look like. So then I can begin to set the desire in my heart towards it. And sometimes it's like we want this instant, quick push button, you know, you just don't get a chick out of an egg with that root in. <laughs> you know, you can you know, you don't get a really good meal from a microwave. You really don't. You know, when you sort of do it from the first time, my daughter <coughs> she loves cooking. She loves cooking from the beginning. So she cooked me French onion soup. She knows I like French onion soup. Mm -hmm. You know, some days we eat together and she says, well, what are you what are you putting on this food? You know, we all choose. She chooses one week, I choose the next, my wife chooses the next. And we sort of say, Oh, I'm, 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 I really like this. French onion soup and steak and ale pop. They're one of my favorite English type foods, French type foods. Other things are like spicy stuff, but this is this is stuff. So she sweats down onions for three days. So the kitchen is just going for three days. She's sweating down onions, peeling them, cutting them, sweating them down until she's got this thick caramelized onion stock. Now, she could have swept down into bed in 10 minutes and cooked them and put a bit of stock in it and half an hour we've had a soup. Tell you, it wouldn't taste like this. <laughs> this was, and then, then she had, had all that cheese, weird cheese, she had the right cheese melting with it to go on that crouton of garlic bread that's in it. So I know you're such. I know. That's just That's just coming. But that's what it's like. When you start thinking about it, what it will taste like, yeah. you want it. So she cooks things for first principles, and then you get everything. <coughs> it takes time. She could have slapped some onions in a microwave, you know, and it wouldn't have been that nice. We'd have had it quick, but it wouldn't have been good. You can't get anything of the desires of God's heart quickly. You have to brew, cultivate, incubate it, take it from first principles, grow it. So the desires of your heart will be there, everything will start to add work on it. So this is why this is a daily process of intimacy with God. You're looking at his heart, changing my heart, aligning my heart with his. Then I can start walking it out. But you have to think about it, angry, imagine it, picture it. You know, get that, wow, I'm looking at this, what the taste is going to be, it's going to be such a fantastic soup. It's going to be everything I wanted. You know, then I think, you know, I had that soup when I was on that cruise one day. It tasted really good, so I started remembering. Wow, this is going to be really worth it. Now, in this stage, I didn't even have to cook it. You know, I just had to, well, I'm going to enjoy this. But as we do it, things will really change. So I'm creating an expectation, a hope, not a wish, because wishful thinking will get you so far. When you have a white hot expectation, hope, you know, Hebrews 11 says that faith is the substance of things hopeful. 
So in my cultivating brooding, I am creating a hope, an expectation, which will be the anchor that enables me to keep at this until I get it. And then faith is the substance of that. Even before I've seen it manifest physically, I can already see it in the spirit. I've already seen it in the heart of God. I'm already seeing it when I'm meditating. I'm already starting to speak it out so the atmosphere is filled with what this looks like because I'm confessing it, I'm calling that what is not as if it is, you know. So I'm calling out what I'm desiring so that God can bring that. I'm framing the future out of what I've seen in what was so that future will become manifested in this realm out of the spiritual realm because all the spiritual blessings are in that realm mm -hmm. so that faith can manifest them in this realm but faith has to have, to have something to hang its hat on a peg which is called hope and then that becomes a substance so i'm creating an expectation i find out about these things in the word so when god shows me something i go into the word of god yeah show me where this is give me insight give me revelation so I'm looking, reading the Word of God, in, in, not studying it, but meditating it. Because I start looking at it. Wow. Then I see things in the Word I've never seen before. Because God's heart unveils the truth, but then even more gives me expectations. Like, wow, this is so of God's purpose and will. Because He wants me to have it. Then sometimes I look at other people's lives. You know, four years, who's gone with four? I look at, wow, yeah, they can, they can, they've done this. I can do it. You know, I can come out of things God because other people have opened the door, I can walk through. You know, then it's this, you know, what if I need it, I must have it. You know. I mean, God, what do you get to that? I must have it. Uh, whatever it takes, I'll be willing to pay the cost. You know. And then it's a delight. Paying the cost is a delight because I know what's coming. I'm so rooted in incubating God's desire and his vision and purpose. I know what's coming, and the delight will be no cost. It's no cost to me anymore because I know what's happening, know what's coming. So it's like, Father, I choose to receive the revelation of your heart, your thoughts into my spirit, deep call to deep. This is what I'm doing. I'm drawing out of the heart of God, the deep things of God, and I'm drawing them into my heart, and then my heart begins to align with his heart, and revelation. And the revelation of it builds and builds and builds, and it's like, wow. You know, show me what does it look like? How is this going to feel to be manifested on the day it feels when it's going to be manifested? Show me how this will have worked, help me to fulfill my destiny. So I drew the things, put it to my mountain or this sphere or something very specific, a mandate that I've been given. You know, I when God showed me the world and it's spinning and slowing down and all the benches and three all over the world, I started to brood them. It's like, you know, where are they? Where are they going to be? Who are those people I'm going to connect with? Who can I help? How can I help establish things? What is it going to look like when it gets established? Then, you know, I get this vision of where it is and God shows me in an encounter. It's like, oh, wow. Yeah, where's this going to start? It's going to start here, and it's going to arc over here, and it's going to come there, it's going to go over there, it's going to complete the circle, and then get the government over the whole US. And then it's going to be like, whoa. All because I caught hold of something, now I can start to see it because I'm rooted over it, and my heart's desires into it. And then it's part of that, those desires become fulfilled. Because hope deferred uh, creates a heart sick, a sick heart. But those desires fulfilled are a tree of life. Now I'm planted by streams of living water, like an oak of righteousness, and draw in life that brings life into what I've cultivated and desire for. Because this is a tree of life to me, which is going to bring fruit. And then when that fruit comes, I can taste the fruit. Now I can give that fruit away to others. Because now this has been incubated, and now that's bring forth fulfillment. So coming to the Northwest and to here is a fulfillment of some of the things I've been rooting out of for the last year and a half. Because <clears throat> I see them in the spirit and my heart is drawn towards them, then it's like, I'll come. You know, I'm just waiting for God to get someone to invite me. Because I'm never going to force a door open. It's always in God's timing. Because somewhere, somewhere, someone else's desire has latched onto something in the realm of the spirit and that will connect with me. 
And they will some way find me or find something if they're supposed to have a relationship with me, and they'll connect. All the people I've engaged with, I didn't know any of them. And I didn't set out, okay, who am I going to make a relationship? How am I going to make this happen? Yeah. They all found me somewhere. You know? And so then when they find me, there's a, there's a connection. Something there is connected because their destiny intersects with mine somewhere. And if I can help in that intersection, create some relationship, encourage and support with them, because I'm all about connecting with people to help them. So that's all this stuff about incubating. It's like, how can I help this government for? You know, then I start looking into this realm, looking at the government's already there. I'm like, ooh, there's none there. Can't see anything. Okay, so I need to call forth the government in that place. Who are the people your desires are drawing? I reach out to them, call out in the spirit, call forth the people who heart. I release this blue light. Which was a bizarre thing. You know, I'm sitting on my mountain one day, cultivated some of these things, just like, okay. And Jesus turns up, stands in front of me on my throne. He's never done it before since he invested me into the thing. It's like he expects me to get on. Because so I go and ask him for the ark, and then I come and he stands there. He said, Right, I want you to release a blue wavelength of light that contains a modulated frequency of these words that are going to call people to the government. <laughs> What? <laughs> 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 so I said, okay, not knowing what to do. So, but I've received that frequency, a resonance. I've got the desire of God because it's already part of the desire. So it's just, this is a how to do something. So I said, so I let my spirit loose. When I let my spirit loose, the training just starts to flow. So I'm saying, stop calling. I release this blue light. And then I saw um, this light comes out of this blue stone that's in my craft. It was 12 stone in the crown in this area of government. Releasing this blue light, the blue light's going out. And I sent angels out of the scroll of the blue ribbon. Take this out. Bring this to people. Get this man that had people. And I'm doing it. So I'm like, oh, done. You know, and then God sort of comes to me a few days. You know, we need to do this regularly. So within a week, a week I uh, met a friend who's one of the other leaders in our area is on our global bench three. And he, I was in a meeting with him, we were walking out here, he said, Do you know anything about blue lights? <laughs> These blue lights have been dancing around me for the last week. <laughs> so I said, Well, um, well, I might know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you feel like? It's just it's causing me to vibrate. Something's drawing me. I said, Well, this is what I did. So I said, I'll see you in the next day. So tomorrow, it's like, we've got, we've got an hour, so I'll tell you. So we'd be sat in my office and just talking. And I said, well, this is what I say. He's been just so vibrating in jail. So, <laughs> and then I got all these testimonies around the world. He kept this blue wall of light appeared in my room. This canopy of light enveloped me. I came around me. Come on. You know, this blue color, and this, and this angel came. And it's like, now, for me, I didn't need to know that, but God sometimes just gives us a little kiss. Because you're sort of in heaven doing all this weird stuff, thinking, okay, it's a does, this, does this do anything? Is, is anything happening? Am I just sort of like, tell me that? <laughs> so sometimes God just gives you that little confirmation, encouragement, a little kiss that says, hey, you may just have done this. And it may seem like nothing happened, but this has gone out into the atmosphere around the world. Mm -hmm. you know? So, and it all came from cultivating the desire of seeing what God had shown me about the world <laughs> and how government needs to be established, so that I get to the point where, hey, now I'm willing to do anything. Because, you know, when the invitation came to the Northwest, it was like, initially it was like, wow, yeah. Normally I was saying that. But this is like, no, I'm, I'm willing to go. You know, so I gave it to my bank and said, look, this is what I've been doing, this is what's happened, this is the invitation. They said, oh, yeah, yeah, let's, 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 let's get it going. So then it's like, yeah, sort it out, get the invitation sorted. Then it's like, then it's like, well, what do you want to do when you come? I said, whatever you want. So I'm coming to it. I said, I'm coming to the Northwest. My desire is to help anyone whose heart is to do any of these things. So please just sort it out. So they did, and a whole bunch of them. I said, look, here's a few people I'm connected with. And Kristen is great. She's a sort of a 
uh, her administrator thing, she catches all the things and makes it happen. She just contacts all these people and it's like, and I'm going to I'm going up to fly to Seattle and spend some time there, and I'm going over to Yakima. You know, let's never say Yakima. Rather than Yakima, which I used to say, <laughs> they working at me. Well, it's English. You know. We haven't got an accent. You've all got the accents. You have another tongue. So, you know, they all got organized and it was there, and then sometimes got a guru over each place. What's your desire in this place? You want to release in this place. You know, bring the people you want to be in that place. Then make connections with some of the other places on you want me to go in the future in this place. And I found there were people who came up from LA from San Diego. Because I know <coughs> this connection here and this art come here. I know in the southwest there'll be a connection. We've already got a group in California meeting, but I've got no liberty to go there yet because the relationship needs to be established for the time. You know, so there are people there, and I'm just giving my heart. <coughs> this is a, another connection with God. So I've really never reached it. Each place, what do you want me to bring in this place? Because I've got different things generally in each place. When I share my testimony in most places, it's been different every time. Because people draw out because it's for the benefit of the people that I come to have. You know, so you can do this in what your calling is, what your destiny is. So that you're able to outwork your destiny. Because two years ago, this was an impossible dream. It was just something which was the desire in the heart of God. And I couldn't see how it could possibly happen until I said yes. Then that desire became something that God began to create. And I meditated on it until everything began to outwork. And on the way, God you know, inspired Google to bring free YouTube video releases. <laughs> Because he does, yeah. Because he sets all these things to bring things into our destiny all around the world, you know. And I look at them, thank you, God, for inspiring those people in Google to create hangouts and create YouTube that I can do events and these can be re rewarded, recorded, and they can go out to the world. I thank him for doing that for me because he did do it for me so I can help him out and release this and connect with people. So then I'm grateful and thankful. Or what it does in, in, in establishing this desire so this desire can be released. So it's now a tree of life. You know, and I've been now over here for, you know, the best part of you know, 16, 17 days. You know, and I feel more refreshed than when I started. Oh, yeah. I do. I mean, I feel, I feel oh, full yeah. You know, I'll go home and it'll probably be like. <laughs> <laughs> the wife will say, you better not be like this when we go on holiday. <laughs> you already warned me. You said you better not come out and go to sleep two weeks on holiday. I like the idea of going to see places in this life. But, but it's like I feel full of life because God's strength is in when you're already doing your destiny. You have all these provisions there to do it. You know, I don't have to create it, I just have to be in a place of rest, knowing I'm doing what God wants. The desires are out there, and it's like a tree of life, you know, fulfillment, real tree of life. So when I'm looking at the end from the beginning, and then I can see that I just have to follow the journey, step by step. You don't need a step by step map, one step at a time. And I'll lead it in this step, and then the next step will come. So then I can then decree and declare and call some things forth, which will create the steps. Because when something is called into being, it's the next step on the journey. Then I just have to walk from A to B to C to D, because I've called it forth to create that so God can release it. You know, I asked this, what does my next year look like? So when I sort of come last year, I had a whole other revelation all through last year. But usually when it comes up to sort of November time, I'll take a pause and it's like, okay, God. Let's spend some time together. What's next year look like? Yeah. What, what are you going to be doing next year? So I set my heart, think about next year, and then things start to come, and he starts to speak to me. You know, mostly direct. Normally it's just like, hey, son, boom, 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 boom. And you know, I pull it together in some of the prophetic things that I release usually at the beginning of the year. You know, and that's usually months worth of God saying, okay. he says it this way, then he'll say it again that way, and then he'll say it again that way. He wants me to make sure I get it. 
know? So I just give time. You have to give space and time for the relationship. Because it comes out of relationship and rest, not striving. Oh no, I bet she was coming. What are you going to be doing? I think she's going to go. It's already in its plan and purpose. I just need to discover it. And then I agree with it and then we work it out. So my desire is to manifest your desires. That's what I say. I want it in and through and around my life, the manifestation of your desire for my life so that your life can be outworked in my life. Then I receive these daily methods. I open my heart to receive them. I show me what you're doing today. Show me what I'm authorized to do. So it's not just ethereal and out there somewhere. It's grounded every day. What's today? So the general thing I'm cultivating then becomes focused into my day so that my day becomes very clear what I'm supposed to do. You know, I intend that mandate in my life. I surrender to it. So I can flow out of that every day and I can administrate it, take the rod, take my scepter, I go to my government, I manage a position, and I call it forth today. So I call forth an open heaven. I send out angels to heaven. No, I embrace the promises of God and release them. So I frame my day in accordance with His will and His purpose. I declare the blessing and favor around me today. You know, I, Psalm 23 is a great song. Now, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Well, not just follow me, they're going to help me. Because I'm calling from the following the mind to come into the, what's ahead so that I can walk into it. So I send out my angels, you know, engaging with the angels, which we did last night is so important because they will do some of the groundwork. Abraham sent his servant Eliezer to go and find a wife for his son Isaac because they had the promise of a line that was going to come. So Isaac had no wife, so there was no way the line would be upright. So, okay, he needs a wife. So he sends his servant back to where his family were from because he wants to draw from the right heritage. So, and he says to the servant, the Lord will send ahead of you an angel. So the angel went ahead. And of course, when he gets up to the well, there's all this kerfuffle going on, and they're arguing over water, and there's the woman who's going to be the wife, is right there. Because the angel stirred up all the trouble. So that he could identify, the servant can identify her. Because he identifies their heart, and their servant heart is absolutely the right sort of person you want for a wife for your master's son. So angels can go before and prepare the way. And they can prepare the connections and the relationships and the things that need to take place in the kingdom. I do it all the time. I send out angels, let people find me who need to connect in relationship. So they go out and they, they, they connect with people. I don't know how it happens. You know, it's like, I didn't even know I connected with Peter until Andrew told me that she put her in touch with Peter because she found me when she heard Ian Clayton do a teacher and he mentioned my name. And that was a few years ago, so she Googled it, couldn't find anything because I didn't know anything. But eventually she found it and somehow, and then she contacted me and asked me some things. And I said, well, this is sort of boring you might want to be part of. And then she said to Peter, hey, you know, there's this new stuff that's like Ian's stuff, but actually explains what Ian's actually saying. <laughs> <laughs> so Peter gets in contact. All I did was just send out the angels with a desire for connection with the people who've got the same heart. Because I'm looking for people all over the world who have the same heart. You know, I'm now starting to connect. It's like the wider field. Some people in Australia that I'm connected to have the same heart. And then they can come, like, the lawyers are here in Australia, in the plan. <laughs> so they, you know, but I'm open now where I wasn't before because my heart I had to pay the cost. And so are the church. Because, you know, there's a cost for them sending you to let me come for them. But actually, it's actually something that will equip them because now they're taking responsibility and I've encouraged them to leave. He's going to bring some words while I'm away. Yeah, see God with some mandates. Share your seven mountains so that people can get rid of it. Releasing people. So me being out of the way actually is part of those people growing in their position of responsibility government. So I don't want to get caught in the bubble. 
Okay, I want to be at something that releases people. So this is now opportunity for them. Yes. So actually, they'll see the blessing of it, and then they'll think I'm the same way a few more times. Maybe. So you know, these are very practical things. You know, it's all about alignment with God's heart, carrying that desire, aligning our hearts with His, and then releasing it. So then we have the government of those spheres that we can begin to brood and incubate the Hebrew and Revelation. Now you're okay. Is that sort of framing up a little bit more, Gary? Yeah. I don't know if it's slide, but we'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Well, we'll take a break and we'll sort of come back somewhere and sort of maybe keep it things. Is that okay? I'm going to give people an hour. All right. So we'll take, like, we'll go until 2 15 for lunch. Um, if you want to run out to get something for later, I mean, for lunch today, you can eat here. That's great. But if you wanted to get some stuff for, for later on, we have several fridges, uh, uh, Dave or um, um, Dave right here in the yellow shirt, or Susan or Allison can help you uh, put that in one of the fridges if you want to. We do not have an oven here to warm stuff up. All we got is a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> That's my kitchen. I know. Yeah. I need to call it to be. The desire for heaven. So, be released for lunch, and we'll see you back here in about an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, that's yeah, that's